In this video, we will talk about a matrix. So a matrix is basically just an array of numbers. There's m rows and n columns, where the rows are the horizontals. So there are 1, 2, up to m rows. And the columns are the verticals. So there are 1, 2, up to n. When we talk about the ijth entry, then we refer to the number that is in the ith row and the jth column. We've seen examples of matrices before in the form of augmented matrices and also the standard matrix representation of a linear transformation. Though they are related, they are describing two different things. And in this video, we will like to talk more about the operations you can do to a matrix in general. Let's consider these examples of matrices. So A is a two by three matrix because it has two rows and three columns. Same as B, B is a two by three matrix and C is a two by two matrix. Sometimes we call these types of matrix where the rows and the columns are equal, a square matrix. Then we can define the sum of two matrices as just the component by component addition, where the one month entry of A plus the one month entry of B becomes the one month entry of A plus B. And in general, the ijth entry of A plus the ijth entry of B becomes the ijth entry of A plus B. And so the resulting matrix is something like this. However, we cannot define addition between matrices that are not of the same size because which two numbers should these components add to. So the sum A plus C is undefined. The matrices must be the same dimensions. We can define a scalar multiplication of the matrix. For instance, two times A would be, we multiply this scalar to each component of this matrix. And so we will get a matrix like this. What if we want to define a multiplication of two matrices? Suppose A is an N by N matrix, and B is an R by S matrix. Then, can we define their product A times B? Well, not always. Such a thing can only be defined when we make sure that the columns on the left side are equal to the rows of the right side. So in this case, we would want to make sure that the matrix B is actually a N by S matrix, so that these two numbers match up. Then the resulting matrix will be an M by S matrix. So how can we define a product? We first write out B as its columns, so A times this column. And now recall that the product between a matrix and a vector was already defined. And so we just extend that definition uh, to each column and we obtain a matrix with S columns, each of which has M rows. So now let's do an example. Let A be a two by two and B a two by three matrix. Then matrix multiplication between A times B will make sense and the resulting matrix will be a two by three matrix. If we follow our definition, this is just this matrix where we do a matrix multiplication of A times the first column of B and so on and so forth. So we do row times column. So eight plus three is 11. Four minus five is negative one. We repeat the process. Six minus six is zero. Three plus 10 is 13. And the last column, 12 plus nine is 21. Six minus 15 is negative nine. So combining all the columns together, the product A times B is the matrix where each of the columns are the matrix multiplication of A times the columns of B. One thing to note about matrix multiplication, A times B is not necessarily equal to B times A. In fact, B times A won't even be defined sometimes. In this case, B is a two by three and A is a two by two and these two numbers are not matching up, so this is undefined. Even if the dimensions match up, it still does not mean that A times B could be B times A. For example, if we compute this product, we do row times column, so one plus two is three, zero plus two is two, zero plus one is one, and zero plus one is one. However, if we do this product, we get one plus zero is one, so we can already see that this is not going to be what's called commutative. If we do the remainder, this is going to be a matrix like this. Of course, sometimes matrices do commute. That is, A times B is equal to B times A for special cases. 
Here are some additional properties of matrix multiplication. The most important thing is to make sure that when you multiply something on the left, then you retain that. So in which side you are multiplying matrices matters. Why is a matrix multiplication defined in this way? Well, suppose we have two linear transformations, T mapping from N to M and S mapping from RM to RS. Let A be the standard matrix representation of T and B be the standard matrix representation of S. Then if we combine the two linear transformations, we will get another linear transformation ST going from RN to RM because RN maps to RM, then RM goes to S. So we first take the transformation T, then wherever that goes in RM, S will map it into RS. And the matrix representation for ST is given by the matrix B times A. To close off this video, we define one more thing, the transpose of a matrix. So a transpose is defined to be the matrix where the rows and columns are switched. So the row of A and A transpose becomes the columns of A. For example, if we take the transpose of this matrix, we get this matrix. Notice that the rows and columns have flipped, and so of course the dimensions of the matrix also flip. This was a 2 by 3, now this is a 3 by 2. There's a couple of properties of transpose, but the one that is important to note is that a B transpose is B transpose A transpose, not A transpose times B transpose. Something like this must happen because if A is an M by N and B is an N by S, then AB is an M by S matrix, but A transpose is N by M, B transpose is S by N, so A transpose times B transpose won't make sense. But if we flip it so that it's B transpose A transpose, then at least the dimensions match up. A quick proof of why this identity is true. To compute the ijth entry of AB transpose, well, this will be the jth entry of AB, which can be computed as follows. We take the dot product of the jth row of A and the ith column of B. To compute the ijth component of B transpose A transpose, it will be the ith row of B transpose is the same as the ith column of B, and the jth column of A transpose is the same as the jth row of A. And then we take the dot product, row times column, and we end up with the same number. And so the ijth components of these two matrices are the same, and i and j were arbitrary, so that means each entry of these two matrices must be the same. So therefore, they are the same matrix.